I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Camera Raw to prepare images for processing with Starry Landscape Stacker. Here I have a set of 25 images that I selected in the Finder and then I said open with Photoshop and that brought me to here in Adobe Camera Raw with these 25 images. Uh, in here we have 13 images which are light frames so they have your stars and some foreground and we have 12 images which I call um, sorry we have 12 images which are called dark frames. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Camera Raw to prepare images for processing with Starry Landscape Stacker. Here we have 25 images in Adobe Camera Raw. I got here by first selecting these images in the Finder and then saying open with Photoshop. These 25 images consist of 13 light frames, and the light frames are your regular images with your stars and your foreground, and another 12 dark frames, which are captured at the same time and with the same, same camera settings as the light frames, but with a lens cap on the camera. These dark frames are used, to, used by Starry Landscape Stacker to reduce noise in the final result. All of these images, the dark frames and the light frames, have to be processed identically in order for Starry Landscape Stacker to work its best. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all. And I did that after I'd selected a light frame so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come over here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that the white balance is set to auto. Well, that's not going to work very well because when I synchronize these settings across all the images, uh, auto on a light frame means something very different from auto on a dark frame, and uh, the color will be all uh, inconsistent. So I'm just going to change this to custom. And now all the images, the white balance will be custom, and the values will be these two values here, and that's perfectly okay. Next, I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit. I underexpose a little bit to try and take advantage of ISO invariance and leave some color in the brightest areas. And then I'm going to bring the contrast all the way down because these are pretty contrasty images and you can see how I have a problem here at the left side of the histogram. So taking the contrast all the way down wasn't enough. I will bring the blacks up a little bit to try and fix that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So white balance to custom, exposure up a little bit, contrast all the way down, and in this case blacks up a little bit. And now everything's looking pretty good. I will now go on to the lens corrections. So let's first look at profile. I do not enable lens profile corrections because I really don't like the results I get when I do that. I will turn on uh, chromatic aberration removal. And then I will go to the manual settings here and I will add a little bit of vignetting correction. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And that's good enough for me. I'm happy for now. Looking down at the bottom here, we can see how we have our settings for using the color space pro photo RGB. That's fine. The bit depth, by default, this is 8 bits per channel. We should set it to 16 bits per channel. 8 bits is not enough information for Starry Landscape Stacker. We want the full 16 bit with the most we can get. So that's okay. Once we've set that, these things should stay consistent and you should see that uh, same every time and you don't have to adjust them again. Now at this point, uh, well, let's first check to make sure that our settings are consistent across all of our images. And so we'll click on this guy and yes, custom white balance, all the settings we had before, click back to a light frame, very good. So now there are two things we could do at this point. We could click on open image and open these images all in Photoshop. And we would do that if we had to paint out some problems, say in the foreground here with uh, a photographer walking through the, our image with a flashlight or something, or if we had a, uh, a building with a light on all the time that we want to paint out. So we could open in Photoshop and correct those things. Uh, airplanes going across the sky, those we don't have to do anything to. Uh, Starry Landscape Stacker will get rid of those for us. In this case, uh, we don't have to do anything, so the best thing to do is come over here to save image, and that's not going to be what we want. We want select all and save images. And now we can save our images. We can put them back where they came from, the same location, uh, but as TIFF files with all the metadata. We want to include all the metadata because Starry Landscape Stacker uses the capture time information to improve the alignment, but it also 
copies all the metadata to the file it generates, and that metadata might be useful in further post-processing later. So do include all your metadata. So now we can click Save, and we can sit back and wait for uh, Adobe Camera Raw to do its thing.